Hello students, welcome to this English class. Let us now resume today the text, the portrait of a lady by Khushwant Singh. You know that Khushwant Singh is uh, thoroughly an Indian. Although he writes in both in, uh, I mean Indian languages as also in English, we find in his writings there is an Indian setting and Khushwant Singh in his writing here gives us an Indian picture. He tells us about the Indian characters, Indian people, Indian children, Indian way of life and all that. And uh, a lot of things have been juxtaposed here in this text. Khushan Singh makes a limpid delineation of the Indian system of cultural heritage and how there is interference of the western culture in the Indian culture. Indian culture is most of the times polluted and this has got a very clear picture in his writings. The students, the portrait of a lady tells us the type of people we have in India and he brings for us, he brings to us three important characters of a different strata of society and you see the younger generation, the elderly generation and the old generation. Three generations are juxtaposed here. The grandmother belongs to the old generation and the parents belong to the elderly generation and the narrator of the text belongs to the younger generation. So, we have three generations here and uh, how we find there is a kind of uh, decrease in the status of human character, human way of life and how the old woman is uh, virtue personified, piety personified and she is the symbol of piety, she is the symbol of religiosity, she is the symbol of a religious, philosophical and a cultural heritage of India and slowly there is a kind of a decrease, there is a kind of a decline in the way of life of Indian characters and we know that the parents uh, have changed their way of life to certain extent. The old people lived in the villages, the old people lived in the uh, I mean the country, but the next generation, the people, I mean the particularly the peop people, I mean the my parents who belong to the second generation, they prefer to live in the cities and when they went to the cities, the children have to go to the cities and uh, they have to go to English schools. And the, all these things have been reflected here in this text and Khushan Singh I mean keeps these things together to make a comparison among all these three kinds of people. And uh, if we recapitulate the ideas contained in the text before, we, before going to the final unit of the text, let us now see that uh, in unit of the one of the text, the writer becomes very much humorous. He becomes humorous and he says that my grandmother like everybody's grandmother was an old woman. The uh, text starts with this line, my grandmother like everybody's grandmother was an old man and the line gives a kind of humor the line gives a kind of joy and when he talks about his grandmother, he says my grandmother like everybody's grandmother was an old woman. It is natural that uh, grandmothers are old and see now Khushan Singh but uh, gives uh, the picture in a different no note, in a different tone also and he also says that people said that she had once been young and pretty. She had once been young and pretty, but he defies. No, grandmother was not 
pretty grandmother was beautiful because he had seen the beauty in his grandmother she is beautiful within and beautiful without on the uh, in the uh, on the appearance she was beautiful in character she was also beautiful so he, she was beautiful in her character she was beautiful in appearance so she was beautiful in all ways and uh, grandmother uh, is an old woman who belongs to the elderly generation and he also talks about the dress the kind of dress she puts on she puts on the uh, the kind of dress that is uh, that uh, uh, elderly people in india used she used a thoroughly white dress and she didn't uh, prefer the kind of dress that uh, 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 girls prefer to wear these days because she bel she belongs to the older values she has values she has virtues and uh, she never allows any room for obscenity and uh, she always tries to clad herself clothe herself completely he, he, he covers her whole body the uh, but uh, uh, the kind of dress these days the children wear is kind is a kind of a different kind of dress therefore he she doesn't approve of the kind of dress that children wear these days and uh, uh, Hu Sun Sing tells us about her dress. She looks like a winter landscape in the mountains. In the, uh, I mean, in the mountains, particularly in the winter season, we find in the Himalayas there is uh, w the Himalayas look thoroughly white because of uh, the snowfall, and uh, she grandmother looks uh, thoroughly white because she has a white appearance. Her dress was white. Her hair silver lock means the hair was uh, was also white so she was white and white and white thoroughly white D so dear students if we uh, again come to the unit 2 of the text we don't come to know that the village school is uh, different from the city school the village school is different from the city school how is the village school different <coughs> in india in the city, in the countries, or particularly the rural areas, or in the villages, we find children go to school in the first. And when the children went to school in the first, into the village schools, they didn't uh, 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 carry any big uh, bag, as we find the children of today carry to the school, because the the children today drag themselves helplessly with a heavy burden of bag. But in those days, children has to carry a satchel. Children have to carry uh, a small bundle of uh, writing and reading materials. That's enough. But uh, and he also juxtaposes these things. And he also tells you about uh, the village school. And the village school is attached uh, to the temples. And what happens in a temple? You know that gods and goddesses are worshipped in the temples. And uh, there is a kind of a religious atmosphere in the temples. And the temples are the citadels of religious things, of virtues, of values, and all these things. And when the children went to school and they studied there, it was a kind of uh, uh, atmosphere. Religious atmosphere was reflected in the character of the children. And uh, the village school was attached to the temple, and the priests were teaching very mm, basics of uh, language basics of math arithmetic or mathematics but uh, 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 that is the thing that is described in the unit 2 of the text and making uh, him ready for school was a very important affair for the uh, for the old lady for the grandmother but the grandmother took a lot of pains to make the boy ready to go to school it's because it is children don't wake up early and they have to uh, be uh, woken up by the uh, by the elderly members of the family and that was the responsibility shouldered on the grandmother and making him ready for school was also an important thing for the grandmother when the boy was there with her, with her and school uh, was uh, not so away from the home it was 
uh, in a walkable distance. And uh, when the grandmother went to school with the boy, she, the boy studied in the veranda, and the village priest taught certain things to vernaculars, particularly vernaculars and a certain uh, basics of mathematics to the children. In the meantime, the grandmother used to sit in the temple studying the scriptures. And you see how the elderly people were very much religious and that was a very important facet and that is a part of Indian culture and a tradition. And uh, she also carried some chapatis with her in order to distribute these things among the village uh, dogs. The dogs also went with, the, with them and they were waiting for the grandmother and when the grandmother and the grandchild would return from the school, while returning the village dogs surrounded them and the grandmother threw some pieces of chapatis to the village dogs and the village dogs quarreled amongst themselves and uh, ate them up. That was the thing that we find and this is a part of Indian culture and Indian people never thought of themselves. They also thought of uh, animals and birds and this is the thing, kind of thing that we find in the character of the grandmother and the grandmother is belongs to an elder, uh, old generation and therefore she has some values and virtues. Uh, this, this is the thing that we find in the unit 2 of the text. And in the next unit, unit 3 of the text, we find the parents are now comfortably settled in the city. And as father and mother had gone to the city and they have settled there, they, I mean the grandmother and the child went there to stay with them. Now they went to the city to live there. And here also, Kushan Singh gives us a free picture the city life and the country life. There is a, I mean the comparison, a contrast between the city life and a country life. And parents settled themselves comfortably in the city and uh, when, and the city life is a different kind of life uh, uh, in which we find the family relationship keeps changing. In a village, the life was something different the relationship was something different. When the grandmother dressed the boy up before going to school, when they, when they were in the village, you, know, you see that grandmother uh, uh, sang some song, particularly the prayer that uh, dealt with uh, God and goddesses with a motif that the grandmother wanted to inculcate the prayer in the mind of the boy. And this is the thing that we find and the city school and the country school. These two kinds of education, the educational systems are also juxtaposed here. The students in the village, the grandmother went to the school with the boy. She accompanied the boy to the school and the school was in uh, attached to the temple. And the grandmother went to the temple and uh, studied the scriptures. And this is the thing we uh, that we find in this unit 2 of the text. And uh, in the city, what happens? Dear students, grandmother could not accompany the boy to the school. What is the reason? The reason is that in a city, the schools are far away from the from home. The schools are far away from residents and therefore the children have to go by bus and school buses run in cities. Be this does not happen in the villages, but it happens in the cities the, and the grandmother could not accompany the boy to the school. The boy had to go to the school alone in the bus and uh, he, he had to study western science he had to study English words, he had to study these things about uh, uh, mathematics, western science, see he has to study a lot of things that is that was that were not being taught in the village schools. And when a grandmother would ask the boy what he learnt at school, the boy would say these things, but the grandmother did not know these things at all. She could not help her in his studies. 
this is the thing that we find here and village school another thing that we find music lesson was also given to the schools uh, to the students in the school in the english medium schools and uh, when he was given music lessons in the schools that was a bad thing he, she could not approve of it and because she thought that music had a lewd association with beggars and harlots. So, this is what we find here in the unit 3 of the text. <laughs> yes, students, let us now resume the text again the portrait of a lady by Khushan Singh, the unit 4 of the text. This is the final unit of the text in which so in a Khushan Singh tells you about uh, the last scene of the grandmother. The grandmother is uh, values and virtues personified. She is thoroughly Indian. She breathes Indian culture and tradition. She is a pious lady. She is a religious minded lady. She always wanted that the children should learn virtuous and religious things from the elderly people. And we know there is always a contact between the grandmother and the grandson. We do not find anything about the grandparents, I mean about the parents. The parents are thrown into oblivion, particularly the grandmother belongs to the elder, older generation and the grandchild, the grandson belongs to the younger generation and uh, in between the parents the I mean Khushan Singh never attaches any importance to the middle culture. He attaches importance on the third generation that is the younger generation the generation to which the grandson belongs and uh, Khushan Singh is very much particular Khushan Singh is very much meticulous about about these things and here let us see what he says in the unit 4 of the text about the grandmother. The grandmother on a very happy ending and the text has a happy ending and the grandmother also has a very happy ending and the grandmother mother, uh, and the grandson both are separated from each other for 5 years because the grandson went abroad. After his university studies, he went abroad for 5 years. When grandmother came to know that her grandson ha was going abroad for 5 years and you know there is, this was the last sign of physical contact between the grandson and the grandmother. The grandmother becomes very upset, the grandmother becomes very unhappy because this is the last sign of physical contact that is going to be lost and the physical contact is getting diluted. The physical contact is getting thinner and thinner it is because when the grandmother and the grandson were in the village there was a very strong relationship and now they have come to the city and the relationship slowly deteriorated. The relationship slowly become thinner and thinner and now the grandson is going away for 5 years and uh, last sign of physical contact is going to be lost between the grandmother and the grandson. However, she he had to reconcile with her lot, she had to reconcile with the situation she had to adjust with the situation. This is the thing that Rafi Khushan Singh tries to maintain and he also gives a message here that the elderly people who have Indian and culture and the Indian virtues and values, they have to accommodate with the situation. When there is a change in the system, Sometimes it happens that the elderly people do not cooperate 
do not cope with the situation, they are not able to adjust, they are not able to adjust with the situation, they are not, they are not able to adjust with the change. But here we find grandmother is very much meticulous in this context and she tries to adjust with all kinds of situation, although she was upset, although she was unhappy, we find she adjusts herself to the situation. And uh, she became, uh, when the grandson went to, uh, went abroad and while going to the station, the grandmother also came to see him off at the station. And uh, she came to see her off at the station and uh, but she could she didn't talk she didn't show her she show any emotion she doesn't become emotional because now emotion is getting thinner because emotion doesn't work human relationship becomes mechanical in the cities human relationship is not has no emotion it becomes thinner and thinner it becomes diluted uh, and uh, therefore grandmother tries to hide her emotion she knows she is unhappy but she doesn't show her unhappiness she tries to show and she tries to adjust to the situation the kind of uh, problem the kind of uh, things that she is going to face in her life and she came to see the boy of at the station and she did not talk to him and she did not show any emotion either. And grandmother is very much meticulous here in this text and her fingers busy tailing the beads. Grandmother came to the station to see her grandson off, but she did not stop singing the prayer. She did not stop saying the prayer. She continued saying the prayer. She also continued counting the beads of the rosary and finally, she kissed his forehead silently. The grandmother kissed the boy's forehead silently and that was the final, that the last sign of physical contact between the grandmother and the grandson. And the grandmother, you know, the students, the kind of thing that we have grandparents particularly should learn these things from the grandmother. The grandmother, Mother's Day in our society should learn these things from this grandmother. The grandsons today in our society should also learn these things from the grandson. And this in Grekhusan Singh juxtaposes these two characters, the grandmother and the grandson and how they give a message to the society to learn things. So, now, the grand, grandson has finished his studies abroad. After five years, he comes back. And uh, when he comes back after five years, he never finds any change in the grandmother. The grandmother looks as usual. Grandmothers always look old. They continue old for many years. And they look the same for many years. And when he came back home from, uh, from Abrad, he finds the grandmother in the same way. And uh, she did not look a day older. And she clasped the grandson in her arms. Because it is uh, after five years, the grandmother is going to have the uh, young grandson with her. And she be this is the happiest moment in her life. And during these five years, you know, their students, she gave, uh, she they spent her time with the sparrows. She fed the sparrows. When she was in the village, she fed the village dogs. She gave some chapatis to the village dogs. But when she came to the city and she stayed there, she did not find any dogs here. And when the boy went abroad, she now gave some chapatis, crumbs of chapatis, small pieces of chapatis to the 
sparrows and this is the this is how the grandmother used to spend her times and the students the happiest moments continue and uh, the students the grandmother you know is a valuable position older elderly people are valuable positions in society younger generations should preserve these people elderly generations should take care of the elderly people elderly people are very valuable the old the new is silver the old is gold make new friends don't forget the old the new is silver the old is gold the students let's now continue khushun sings the portrait of a lady this is the text in who is the grandmother happens to be the protagonist this is the text in who is the grandmother is the central character the grandmother is a lean spin of this text and the grandmother here happens to be the most important idea she happens to be the most important ideology she happens to be the most important personality whose influence whose character has a deep impact on the on the younger generation of the society and this unit four of the text of the portrait of a lady the grandmother gives a different kind of approach that is khushun singh tells us he gives us the picture of the last scene of the of the grandmother in the previous three units we know about the way of life of grandmother and here how he marks the way of death the grandmother's life comes to a stand still grandmother dies the last scene is very much important to it's because in the previous scenes that i know that the text just started with a humor and the text uh, ends in sorrow khushan singh start, starts the text with a humor like any other grandmother the grandmother is an old woman like everybody's grandmother his grandmother was an old woman he starts the text with a humor but he ends the text with his sorrow because the grandmother comes to here her life comes to an end in this unit we come to know that khushan singh tells us that in the evenings in the evening the uh, a change came over her she was in her harness she had been doing everything actively in the previous units and in this last unit we come to know that some change came over grandmother all of a sudden what is that now the grandson has come back after 5 years from from, from the foreign land ajip she has she was waiting for the grand, grandson she has to see everybody here in the family she was waiting for the grandson her son was her son himself was there her her daughter in law was also there and now one member in the family was not there that is the grandson she loved the grandson the most she wanted that the grandson should come back should return from the foreign land therefore she was waiting as if she was waiting for his arrival now the grandson has come back the grandson has returned home uh, in the evening there was a great change that came over her and in the evening that day she didn't pray you know that she was always praying 
she was always saying the prayer. She was always counting the beads of the rosary. She was always chanting the name of God every moment. She was very pious, pious to the core, thoroughly pious, very much religious. But now there is a sea change. The evening has come. It is not only the evening, it is the evening of her life. Evening stands for death, morning stands for life. And you know, the text started in the morning. In the first three units, the first unit talks of the morning, the second talks of the midday, the third talks of the afternoon of life. Now, the, it is the evening of life. The evening of life means she was going to die. And the writer here tells us that a great change came over her. She did not pray. What, she, what, she, what, she, what did she do? She collected the neighbor, I mean the women in the neighborhood. Grandmother collected the women in the neighborhood because she was going to establish her relationship with others also. She maintained a kind of relationship with the family members. She also maintained her relationship with others in the, in the neighborhood. He, she had a good relationship with the neighbors as well. She collected the elderly women of the neighborhood. She wanted to spend some time with them. She spent the whole life with the family members. Now she wants to spend some time with the neighbor, with the women of the women in the neighborhood. She got on got an old drum and started to sing. And started beating the drum, singing. And this is what she does here now. The grandmother, there is a change in the grandmother's way of life. She collected the women of the neighborhood and got an old drum, started to sing, started beating the drum and started singing. What did the, the family members do? The family members persuaded her to stop overtraining because she was a lady, she was an old lady, old woman and she was tired, she was very weak and if she would go on beating the drum and singing simultaneously, she might be exhausted, she might suffer exhaustion and therefore, he persuaded, the, I mean the family members persuaded her to stop overtraining, not to continue beating the drum relentlessly, stoplessly and it will cause overtraining. The family members stopped her, but dear students, she did not listen to all the things. And grandmother in the next morning, she was taken ill, just a mild fever and doctor said it would go. Doctor said that the fever would go, the fever would subside. No problem, just it is a mild fever, the, uh, she should get, she should, she should take medicine and a simple medicine will cure her from the sickness, from the fever, because it was just a mild one. But God has different things to do. God's way of life is something different, destiny is something different. What is latent that cannot be bloated? What is there in your fate must bear the fruits. And the grandmother has become old, she has mild fever and the doctor said it would go, but what happened? Grandmother said, do not worry children, my end was, my end is near my end is near. 
that is end means end of life death death is close by death is now knocking at the door death is now showing her showing his head death has come death is inevitable once born means one has to die one must die jatasya hi dhruva mrutyu once you are born means you must die death is the only sure thing in life death is the only certain thing in life other things are just illusions man has come empty handed man came without anything man came naked man came to the world bare hands when he goes back after death he goes the same way we know there are two points in human li human life one is birth the other is death in geometry we know the line that connects two points when two points are connected it becomes a line when two points are connected it becomes a line and when birth is a um, point death is a point when death and birth and death are connected it becomes a line and this line is life and life is between these two points life is between birth and death the right the line that connects the two points is called life and once someone is born has to die death is inevitable death is sure to happen death must come one day but love never dies love is immortal love never changes love is like the pole star as shakespeare says let me not to the marriage of true minds that admit impediments love is not love which alters when alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove it is an ever fixed mark like a pole star to every wandering bark loves not a time spool the rosy leaves and the cheeks under bending sickly compass come so love is immortal love is perennial love is perpetual everything is subject to death and decadence except love love persists love continues things get perished everything gets perished except love and here we find that grandmother is love personified she loves the children she loves the grand her grandchild also she loves the her son her daughter in law she loves her grandson she un understand only one thing that is love love for mankind not only human beings she also loves animals she also loves birds and when she accompanied her grandson to the village school she fed the village dogs when she came to the city she fed the sparrows and she loved everybody not only that she also loved the neighbor neighbor, neighbor, neighbor loved her neighbors the people around her because the fellow men are also important for everybody and she loved the grand child and grand children and ch children and grand daughter also and this is very important what we see here in this text the students let's now again think of the text the portrait of a lady by khushan singh you know that khushan singh is an indian writer 
who attaches importance to the Indian values, Indian, Indian culture and Indian tradition. You know culture is very important in life. Life without culture is meaningless. Life without culture is like the proverbial play of Hamlet without the prince of Denmark. Culture is a culture adds spice to life and without culture human life becomes nasty, brutish, solitary, short, poor, morose, ill-tempered, drab, colorless and life becomes rich when we have culture. Culture is engraved in your heart, engraved in your mind, engraved in your brain. You know, the students, we have rich culture in our life. What do you think of the Ramayan? What do you think of the Mahabharat? The Ramayan and the Mahabharat are very important and the two great epics of the world. They are on paralleled works. They are works par excellence. They are full of cultural, culture and tradition, cultural heritage. The Ramayan speaks of Lord Rama, Goddess Sita and the kind of relationship that existed among the brothers. We have social life, we have religious life, we have cultural life and we also have a political life. Lord Ram gives importance to all these things. He maintains and this is and the Raman is also a, is a part of Indian culture and Indian culture is based on the Ramayana and everybody gives example of the characters from the Ramayana. If you go to the Mahabharat, it gives us ideas about the cultural tradition, the culture, the Indian culture, the Indian tradition, the kind of love, the kind of relationship one should have. If you have good relationship, God is with you. If you do not, you have bad mind, God is not with you. Lord Krishna was with the Pandavas. It is because the Pandavas were good. Lord Krishna did not go to the Kauravas, because the Kauravas they did not attach importance to the Indian culture, they did not attach importance to the good things of life, they always attached the important, importance to the villainous aspects of life, to the bad things of life and therefore, in Indian culture we find that there is a poetic justice, poetic justice means where virtue is rewarded and vice goes punished. Do not you find these things in the texts, in the epics? Virtue is rewarded and vice goes punished. Does Rabban become victorious? He is evil personified. He is, he plays villainy. Does he become a winner? Does he become the winner? No, the students, he does not become the winner. Who becomes the winner? Lord Ramam becomes the winner because he attaches importance to the values of life, the cultural culture of life. So, culture is a mixture of the heart and head. Culture does not mean the culture of a head only, culture does not mean the culture of a heart only. We have two vital organs. The students, we have two vital organs, one is heart, the other is head. 
the head should understand the heart should not it yes it should the head should understand the heart and the heart should heart should understand the head when there is a collaboration between the head and heart man is successful man becomes a successful when is, there is a balance between the head and heart so that is culture so when culture is with us we should have the free play of the heart as well as the head head and heart are equally important and if you have the culture of head only you cannot be successful for example you go on reading science and science and science and science that's the culture of head only science and if you don't attach a importance to the other aspects of life like love friendship relationship good wishes what are these the, these things these things are also important in life and these things are related to the heart we should have both the things culture of head and culture of heart and when both the things will be together you will be successful in life and if you have the culture of head you only go on reading science and science and science without the culture of any emotion without the culture of any heart without any culture of love friendship and all these things will you be successful will you be a good man in life no so heart and head are equally equally important which should be given equal importance in life and here we find this is reflected in the grandmother's life grandmother is an is an ep epitome of the cultural tradition of india she is the epitome of the culture of head and the culture of heart and in the morning you knew that a change came over her she became sick the doctor said that it would go but what happened actually in the true sense of the term see continued she collected the other women of the neighborhood started beating the drum singing and she didn't uh, want that others should feel disturbed and when morning came she started the prayer again and the rosary fell off her hands this is what we find here the students the grandmother is old she belongs to the elderly generation and she is virtue personified she is values indian values personified we should all attach importance to the elderly people and the elderly people are the precious possessions of our life and our life becomes rich our life becomes great when we go parallel when we accept the elderly people with us elderly people are very important positions and the important positions of life should be taken care of and the important ideologies of life should be taken care of you may grow but as uh, oliver goldsmith says that you may grow rich you may grow materialistic well off and he says let knowledge grow from more to more but more of reverence in us dwell we may have knowledge we may collect knowledge uh, like ancient women collecting fuel from vacant plots we may collect information we may collect knowledge information but wisdom is always at the top what is wisdom wisdom is a balance between knowledge and information and if you don't have in knowledge wisdom our life is lost life without religion life without the cultural heritage 
all these things are very important in life dear students life is precious life is full of pleasure life is full of optimism life is full of joys life is full of all these things and the elderly people are the examples of all these things we should take care of the elderly people in our society and the social life the religious life and the political life all the lives of a human being will become great when man will take care of the elderly people because elderly people think of the younger generation always thank you very much